I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever gone to the library and found a book that sounded interesting, but you put it back on the shelf because the cover didn't appeal to you? Or has a friend recommended a book that sounds great, but the cover turns you off? Well, I'm here to tell you that you should never judge a book by its cover. Unfortunately, this was the case whenever I saw The Seer and the Sword by Victoria Hanley. My cousin recommended this book to me back in high school. She and I have very similar taste in books, and she has recommended a lot of great novels for me to read. But each time I saw this title in my search for something new to read, I saw the cover and always put it back on the shelf. And even when I checked it out from the library, hoping I would convince myself to read it, I would always take it back without reading a word. I'm a very visual person, and I kind of hate this about me, but I do tend to judge a book by its cover, unless I've heard something great about it from someone else then I might decide to give it a chance. Quite a few of my all-time favorite novels had covers that I was originally unimpressed with, such as The Singer of All Songs and The Goose Girl. But after reading and loving those books, I grew to love the cover art as well. When I checked out The Seer and the Sword from my library this time, I was determined I was going to read something, even if it was only just a chapter. But by the time the first page was over, I was hooked. Victoria Hanley has such a wonderful storytelling ability. From the very first chapter all the way through the story, I was excited and captivated and interested to see how the story would unfold. From the synopsis on the jacket and the artwork on the cover, I thought the story would focus solely on Tarina, who is the princess and seer. But Hanley's story bounces from character to character to character. One chapter will follow Tarina's progress, and another will be dedicated to Landon, who is the orphaned prince from a recently defeated kingdom. There are even chapters that focused on the villain. It is so thought out and clever. Ah. Each chapter, each character is just one piece in this lovely puzzle that is so much fun to read and put together. Before grabbing this book, I had been feeling slightly disappointed that I hadn't found a book that I couldn't help but devour in almost two years. I've enjoyed the books I've read, and I've loved the books that I've reread, but I didn't find a book that I couldn't help but tear through with a hunger that only certain new books can give you. Until I started this book. It made me squeal and delight and fear and shock and happiness and... <laughs> it had me turning pages and flipping through the words with excitement. I couldn't wait to experience Landon's new adventures. I read with nervous anticipation as we watched the villain's plots unfold. And there was a romance that was so exciting to watch happen and take place and... Hanley has filled these 341 pages with so much adventure and story, it's astonishing. The characters are so thought out and believable, and so lovable too. Well, except maybe Vesputo and his men. This novel had me captivated almost instantly. So I urge you all to read this book. Don't make my mistake and put off reading this novel. Aww, it's such an amazing story. If you are interested in buying The Seer and the Sword by Victoria Hanley, there are links just below this video. And don't forget to check out my blog for updates about what I'm reading and more.